The reading is uh, taken from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17 through to verse 24. 17 to 24. This is what God says. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness." Do you ever feel as a Christian that you're really not living the life that you're meant to be living? That somehow you're missing out on the truth that you really are supposed to know and enjoy in Christ Jesus? But Paul in the letter to Ephesians says the Christian life should be extraordinary. Chapter 1 tells us that the triune God is working in you and in the other members of your church. But the power of the resurrection is yours. Chapter 2 says, yes, your condition was appalling. You were dead in sins. But God has stepped in. And he smashed down every barrier. So there's no first and second class Christians now. But actually everybody is heir of the promises of God. Chapter 3 says that this mystery is being made known across the world through the church Yes, even the church you go to. And he prays that that church would be filled with the fullness of God himself. Chapter 3 explains through the teaching of the Bible, every person has a part to play in church life and the purposes of God. And yet, and yet it doesn't seem to be that way to you. Something seems to be missing somehow. Something doesn't quite add up in the way that you want it to. So he says, that's not abnormal. I find these verses quite comforting. I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. It is possible for Christians at points in their lives to live like non-Christians. It's possible for Christians to fall short of knowing the triune God and the power of the resurrection, barriers being smashed down and everybody working, it is possible for church to fall short and be just like the world, live like the Gentiles do. But the great thing about this passage is Paul says, I insist, it stops. Not only does he say it's possible, he also says it has to stop and it's got to stop now. I insist on it. And you say, well, I'm in a rut as a Christian, and I've been in this rut for years, and I don't know how to get out of this rut. It frightens me, the things that I do, and the things I say, and the things I think. Paul, like a doctor almost, says, I'll tell you what the cause of the problem is, and we'll go through all the symptoms that show you you've got it wrong. What's the cause? In the futility of their thinking. It's a strange thing, isn't it? You might feel you've got in a rut because of an incident or something that's happened, and yet God's on the throne. He allows everything to happen. He says, no, the problem is not there. The problem is inside of yourself. I was told a story uh, not long ago about a man who had a drink problem. And he stopped now for 20 years, but the day he stopped drinking, he put a little sign up on his mirror while he was shaving, and it said, you are the problem. Not everybody else, not circumstances, not situations, you are the problem. And he was shaving that first morning, and he kept reminding himself, I'm not going to blame everyone else, I'll just go back to drinking. You are the problem. 
And as he was shaving, he suddenly threw his razor into the bowl and he shouted, it's not me, it's that wife upstairs. And the mirror stayed with the saying, you were the problem. You were the problem. It's your thinking is the problem. Your thinking is causing certain things. You're thinking like a non-Christian. Your thinking is what? It's pointless. You're wasting all these hours thinking and it doesn't make any sense. And just like you were before you were a Christian, you're not understanding anything anymore. The lights have gone off. You can't see what the point of your Christian life is. And more than that, God seems a million miles away. You're separated. It's all because you're thinking. And Paul says, I insist you stop. And worse than that, your heart is becoming hard. The hymns don't mean anything anymore. The sermons don't mean anything more. You're cynical about other Christians. You're not able to enjoy fellowship with God and fellowship with believers. And now you've stopped feeling as you should. You're starting to give yourself over to all kinds of sins. It doesn't just mean sexual sins. It means any sin that can make you feel sensual sin. Anything that can get you to feel. And yet all that happens is you indulge more and more and more. And that lust that you have is never satisfied. The more you gossip, the more you criticize. The more you want to gossip, the more you criticize. And yet it never brings you satisfaction you see if that's you if you look and say yes i feel god's a million miles away i don't understand what god's doing i've stopped feeling i'm indulging in sin and i'm unable to stop and i have a continual lust for more then you've got symptoms you're thinking like a non-christian and you weren't saved to think like a non-christian you were saved to think like a christian was an illustration I heard years ago. It's my favourite illustration. It's the story of the ugly duckling. Now, if you remember that children's story, there's a duckling, isn't there? Or so he thinks. And he's rejected by all the other ducks. And he's miserable. What's his problem? His problem is, is he's not a duckling at all. He's a swan. He's not made to scratch around and hang around with ducks. He's made to fly like a swan. And until he realizes that and leaves the ducks and joins the swan, he's miserable, isn't he? Well, that's what Paul is saying here. You're a Christian, and yet you're living like you're part of the world. You're thinking like the world. And you wonder why your understanding's darkened. And you wonder why you're separated from God. And you wonder why you have this lust to do and say things which are wrong. And it just drives you relentlessly. And you feel you can't get out. And Paul says, I insist, you stop. Stop it. Quite funny, isn't it, with children who misbehave. The teacher steps in and says, no, stop it. Stop it at once. The child looks and jolts up. That's exactly what he's saying here. God doesn't want you to not know the fellowship of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. God doesn't want there to be barriers in church. God doesn't want the church not to know the fullness of God. God doesn't want any church, whatever church it is, not to function with every part doing its work. He insists. It stops. You say, well, how does it stop? I've tried. I've indulged in all kinds of things, some of them so-called Christian, but they've left me with a desire for more. Listen to verse 20. What a verse. You, however, you, however, you have not come to know Christ that way. You didn't come to know Christ by trying to work out problems for yourself. You didn't come to know Christ by thinking like the world. You didn't come to know Christ by trying your best. While you were dead in trespasses and sins, and while you were controlled by the lust of the flesh, and the devil had such power over your life, That was when you were darkened in your understanding. But God, who is rich in mercy, has brought you to trust Jesus Christ. It's all of faith. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. You go back to that first principle. And what do I need to know? I need to remember what I heard and what I was taught in accordance with him. I need to go back to the Bible And I need to read it again and understand what the Bible teaches about Jesus. I need to let the Bible read me as I read the Bible. 
I need to realize that my desires are sinful, but I have a Savior who can remove them. So what do I do then? Verse 22. You were taught in regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. When you're soaking wet, I remember as a boy coming in and I hadn't worn a coat and my uniform was wet. And there's that line that uh, my mother would say, I'd say, I'm freezing and I'm wet. She'd say, well, take your clothes off and put on new ones. Well, I want to watch this on the TV first. Take them off. But I want to do this first and play with my brothers. Do this first. If you want to be right with God again, you've got to take off your old self that you've put on. It doesn't belong. It's a corpse. There's no pleasure in it anymore. You've got to take it off with all of its deceitful desires. And it doesn't matter what you've done or how much you've failed God. It's possible for you to make a new start as a Christian. Take it off. Paul insists on it. God's Spirit insists on it through Paul and be made new in the attitude of your mind. That's the tough one, isn't it? I've got to discipline myself to think differently. I've got to murder, literally murder, those thoughts that enter my head that cause such despair. Every time a sinful thought comes in, I must wrestle with it and destroy it, shake my head and say, I didn't come to know Christ this way. I came to know a Savior who loved me and gave himself for me. So what happens then? It doesn't matter how long the rut is. I love this, don't you? It doesn't matter how long the rut is. Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You can look like God. I always think that verse in the Bible, be holy as I am holy. Isn't God setting the bar too high? No, in Christ, you can look like God. If you are willing, however long you've got into that rut and thought the wrong way, to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord again and put off the old thoughts and despise those old thoughts, hate them with a perfect hatred and look to Jesus Christ, however long you've been backslidden, however long you've hated church, however angry you might be in your relationships, However much work might be difficult, or lack of work might be difficult, it is possible for you to look like God as a Christian, and it's only a prayer away. Jesus didn't die. Arise again. Pray for you in heaven, for you to be in a rut. Trust him again. Remember, you didn't come to know Christ that way. You came to know him by trusting him as your Lord and Saviour. And you can put off your old self, put on a new self, created to be like God. And then there's a list in Ephesians of specific areas you've got to put off and put on. Could be lying, could be stealing, could be in your marriage, could be in your workplace. But whatever the idol is that makes you think like a non-Christian, I insist, says Paul, you stop it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it.